on these two problems, we're given either cosine or sine, and also the quadrant where our angle fits into, and we're asked to find the other one. So on this first one, we know cosine of t is 24 25ths, and t is going to be in the fourth quadrant, which is important. Our goal is to find sine of t. So there are a couple different ways you can go about this. You can either use the Pythagorean identity, fill in there and solve it down, or I kind of like this alternate way. Um, this is how I've always kind of done them, but it's always been really helpful if I just draw a triangle. And when I draw this triangle, it's gonna be a right triangle. I'm not too concerned about making this accurate as far as which quadrant I draw it into or anything like that. Also, I'm gonna ignore as I go through this, any positives or negatives uh, that may be given to us on this next one, you'll see that I'll ignore the negative with the one fourth until the end, all right? So if I know that cosine of t is 24 over 25, I can start labeling sides on this triangle that I also know that from Sokotoa, cosine is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 24 goes on the, the adjacent side and then and 25 is gonna be the hypotenuse. So that's gonna be across from the right angle. Okay, if I wanna find sine of t, which is the ultimate goal here, to get sine of t, I'm gonna need the opposite over the hypotenuse, just based on Sokotoa. So I don't know this opposite side over here. I'm just gonna label that as like A for the time being. And then let's try to, to find A. Well, this can go back to the Pythagorean uh, theorem. So we can say a squared plus b squared, 24 in this case, equals 25 squared, the hypotenuse squared. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared, usually a pretty easy one to rem remember. Um, in solving this down, trying to find a, I'll go ahead and say a squared plus 24 squared. Well, 24 squared works out to be 576 equals 25 squared, kind of big numbers here, but 625. Next, I'd wanna isolate the a squared on one side by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract the 576 to the other side, and that's gonna give us 49. All right, so nice power equation. We'll apply a square root to both sides and end up with a equals seven. Now, again, I didn't bother worrying about the positive and negative as I applied the square root here. I'm going to worry about the positive and negative in just a little bit. Okay, so I can say a is gonna be seven for the time being anyway. All right, so sine of t is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So I labeled t to be in this corner in this angle. So opposite seven over hypotenuse 25. So seven over 25, but now I wanna be really careful about my sign because I kind of ignored those up until this point. Okay, so how I deal with the signs, um, making sure that I've got the right sign going on for each one of these trigonometric ratios is I've got this phrase that I learned way back when says all students take calculus. All right, and what this means is in the first quadrant, all of the trigonometric ratios are positive, every single one of them, sine, cosine, tangent, all the other reciprocal ones. In the second quadrant, only sine and its reciprocal, cosecant, are positive. In the third quadrant, tangent and cotangent, its reciprocal, are positive. And then fourth quadrant, that's the one we're concerned with, only cosine and secant, its reciprocal, are gonna be positive. So notice that we were in the fourth quadrant, so we're only concerned with the fourth quadrant here. We said cosine was positive, but all the rest of them, besides secant, its reciprocal, are going to be negative. All right, so we were trying to find sine in the fourth quadrant. So sine in the fourth quadrant has to be negative, so here's where I would make sure that I include a negative with my 7 25ths. Let's do another one real quickly where we have sine of t is given to us to be negative 1 4th, and we know t is in the third quadrant. Okay, so third quadrant, we'll deal with that in a second. Our goal is again to find cosine of t. So what I'm gonna do just off to the side here real quickly is draw myself a triangle, label where my angle t is gonna be. Um, and then sine of t is opposite over hypotenuse is gonna be one over four. One over four, again, kind of ignoring the negative. We'll take care of that when we think about all students take calculus in a second. 
okay, to get cosine of t, which is the ultimate goal here, cosine of t is going to require adjacent over hypotenuse based on SOHCAHTOA. So we need to find this adjacent side. I'm going to label that with a b. Could have picked a or b, doesn't really matter. But the Pythagorean theorem says 1 squared plus b squared equals 4 squared, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is 1 plus b squared equals 16. We'll go ahead and isolate the b squared by subtracting one from both sides. So we end up with 15 on the other side. Go ahead and apply a square root to both sides. And I got b is the square root of 15. Again, some people may insist to put a plus and minus here and then really dig into, do we need it to be positive or negative? I'm just kind of ignoring that for the time being. We'll be really careful with our positives and negatives in just a second. All right, so as we want to set up cosine of t, remember that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So I know it's going to be a square root of 15 over 4. As long as we know SOHCAHTOA, we can get that far. But then just remember, all students take calculus. We were in the third quadrant. So in the third quadrant, tangent is positive and cotangent. What we're dealing with, sine was going to be negative. Cosine also has to be negative. So based on our little phrase over there, all students take calculus, we can be really confident that cosine in the, of an angle in the third quadrant has to be negative. So I'm going to go ahead and say negative square root of 15 over 4. This one won't reduce down any further, so we can be really confident we got it right. As long as we are confident about our a squared plus b squared equals c squared and the solving down over here. All right, hope this helps out. Good luck on using these triangles to help um, find your trigonometric ratios.